Hi, welcome to Unlock Layout and Design YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss an important topic known as ground bounds. In order to understand ground bounds, first what we will understand is how a digital gate works. The simplest of the digital gate is the inverter and we will try to understand how a inverter works. Okay. So I have drawn here a CMOS inverter. So this is M2 and this is M1. This is the NMOS and this is a PMOS okay. and this is VIN and this is VOUT. Okay. So we will analyze this uh, circuit uh, in uh, three different conditions. So we know how the input changes. So input changes from 0 to VDD. Okay. So we will try to analyze this circuit under three conditions when it is a 0, VDD and VDD by 2 when it is transitioning from 0 to VDD. Okay. Case 1 when V in equal to 0. When V in equal to 0, what, what happens here is M1 is off. Why? Because you know, VTH V in is greater lesser than VTH. So VTH which generally will be around 500 600 millivolt and V in now here is 0. V in is 0 and V in is less than VTH. That's therefore M1 is off. And what happens to M2? M2 has got full VGS because PMOS here it is VDD and V in is 0. Therefore PMOS will get full so if you see here like this, this is a VDD and this one is 0. So this will get full VGS of VDD. Therefore M2 is uh, either it can be on in saturation or linear region because of this full scale input voltage and VDS lesser than VGS minus VDH. M2 will be in linear region. So what will be the equivalent circuit? So top one is a switch which is on okay and bottom nmos is a switch which is open so this is on it will have some resistance r off so this is vdd this is v out this is ground so top switch is on v out is equal to vdd so v out is vdd equal to vdd okay next case Basically, these two PMOS and NMOS, they both are like switches. And how much current is flowing now here in this condition? In this condition, for current to flow always, there must be a potential difference and a return path. So now, current cannot flow from VDT to ground because there is no closed path. There is an open circuit here. So current cannot flow like this. So current can it flow from V in to V out? So from V in to V out, v, v out where is it connected? It is again connected to some gate of some MOS. Okay. So gate we know that no current will flow through the gate. So current will not flow here also. So there is no current flow here. There is no current flow here. But V out is tied to VDD through a small resistance. So I say that the current that is flowing is zero. Next condition is when V in is equal to VDD. So we are now here. We completed this condition. Now we are in this condition. When V in is VDD, what happens to M1 and what happens to M2? So for M1, M1 is now on and it is in linear region. Okay. And what happens to M2? M2 now is cut off. Okay, so because M2 is now a PMOS transistor and this is also VDD and this is also VDD, there is no VGS, so this one is cut off. Now, in this condition, what happens is the top switch M PMOS switch is open and bottom switch NMOS is closed and V out now is equal to zero and V out is shorted to ground through the small resistance. And will a current flow from VDT to, to ground now? Current cannot flow because there is an open circuit. There is no closed path. And from V out to ground will a current flow? 
there is no uh, potential difference here this is also zero this is also zero so no current will flow here also so v out is uh, grounded through this small resistance so now we will consider the third condition when v in is vdd by 2 when v in is vdd by 2 what happens so say this is say 1.8 volt and this is 0 and now V in is 900 millivolt half of VDD that time well, assume the VTH is 0. 0.6 volt assume VTH of both the transistors is like 0. 0.6 volt now 900 millivolt VTH is 0. 0.6 will there be a VGS so now VGS equal to 900 millivolt which is greater than 0. 0.6 so M M1 which is N mass is on so which is M1 is on and what happens to P mass P mass also has got VGS of 900 millivolt 1.8 minus 900 is 900 so VTH is 0.6 so this also has got a VTH VGS greater than VTH so M2 is also on and both of them are now not in linear but in saturation so now when i have the top switch and the bottom switch both of them are closed so can a current flow from vdd to ground definitely a current will flow from vdd to, to ground and that current will be limited only by the uh, uh, transistor sizes but otherwise there will be a big current that will be flowing okay so when v, v in is in between so when v in transitions only that time there will be a current otherwise the current will be zero as we saw when v in is zero the current is zero when v in is vdd the current is zero both cases the current is zero only when it transitions from 0 to VDD during this time only a current will be flowing we will see that in the uh, next uh, slide so this was when V in was changing from low to high okay this is V in and this one what you see here is V out so when V in was low there was no and this one is like the transfer characteristics i have v in and v out so v in is there and this is v out and this is time this is time again and this is transfer characteristics and this one is the current that flows from vdd to ground okay so this current will be this waveform so as you see when v in is zero uh, one of the transistor pmos is on but nmos is off and no current is flowing here that's why no current is flowing in this region and if you see when v in is high that time n mos is on but in this region n mos on p mos off so no current flows in this region p mos is on n mos is off so there is no direct path between vdd and ground okay so one of the switches will be on or it will be something like this vdd and ground so either one of the switch will be open one of the switch will be closed that's why there is no path whereas in this region in this region in this region like both of them will be on so so in this region also there is no current but here in this region as you can see there will be a current flow from VDD to ground okay so if I see the current waveform it will be just like a spike like this so it will be 0 and when V in is 0 so whenever V in transitions only during that time there will be a current flow so whenever this V in and V out transition only during that time will have a current flow and this current is nothing but like spike correct 
so only current will flow in spikes so this is not true only for uh, uh, in, uh, inverter it is true for all uh, digital gates okay see in fact uh, uh, we started using uh, cmos for this reason only so when any one of them uh, when it is not transitioning and it is static v in is static v out is static the, that time there is no current flowing and that's why the static power is power is equal to zero only when there is a transition during this time a current will flow and there will be power consumption that's why cmos has got the lowest power consumption because of this okay let's try and understand what happens if i i have a inductance like this connected to ground i inject a current pulse like this okay i inject a current pulse to an inductor like this so what is the voltage across the inductance vl is given by minus l di by dt okay l di by dt basically a inductor opposes any change in current instant change in current it will oppose and that's how it will introduce a voltage across it so in order to understand this uh, by uh, quantity quantitative analysis let's try and put some values suppose say inductor is say 5 nano henry and then i have di which is say some 10 milliamp of current is changing in say 1 nanosecond okay so this is uh, 0 to say 10 milliamp in 1 nanosecond of time this time interval is 1 nanosecond okay so in 1 nanosecond so what is the voltage 5 into 10 50 nano nano will go 50 millivolt so this potential will be 50 millivolt so whenever you have and what happens if the current increases suppose instead of that it becomes 100 millivolt 100 milliamps in the same time frame then it will be 500 millivolt okay so just imagine uh, how big the voltage uh, spike would be across this inductor whenever we have a current spike there will be a voltage spike hmm. so now whenever we have ic so we have an IC like this. These are the pins I have. So this is my die which is sitting in the center. Okay. So I have bond pads here. And this will be connected to the pins through a wire which is called as bond wire. Okay. So it will be floating. And this is how it connects. So this one is called as bond wire or wire bond they say and this will have a parasitic inductance that's what i have brought in here so i have put the parasitic inductances here so i know whenever my input transitions from zero to vdd so what happens so this is vdd and this is ground a current will flow during this transition whenever it transitions a current spike will come and this current spike will go through this inductance which will give rise to l di by dt and this source voltage now will not be at zero it will be bouncy like this so whenever there is a transition it bounces from zero to say some 50 millivolt or 100 millivolt and it keeps bouncing that's why it's called as ground bounce okay similar thing can happen even with the power supply so vdd is there and whenever a current flows here the spikes the same spike current flows here what happens the vdd also will have a bounce so this is vdd and this voltage the source voltage here would be lesser than vdd by around 50 millivolt and this is called as supply bounce So what are the effects of ground and supply bounds? So first thing is we understood that. So suppose I have an NMOS like this. So this is supposed to be my zero. And because of this, there is a bounce here, say around 60 millivolt. 
or 50 milliwatt of bonds is there so when will this uh, lmos transistor turn on when v gate is greater than say 600 millivolt if vth is 600 millivolt so then the moment vgs uh, goes above 600 then this nmos will turn on but because of this ground bounce what happens here there is a 60 millivolt coming at the source so now vgs should be greater than 660 millivolt only then this will turn on so this kind of um, uh, unpredictability uh, of uh, like the ground uh, or the supply is what is known as supply signal integrity so this is something known as the power supply integrity or power supply signal integrity signal integrity and power supply integrity issues so you will have supply integrity issues second one is we know that it can if this uh, bounce ground bounce is very high say if it is more than like 600 millivolts so then it can trigger a latch up okay so what is cmos latch up so that is covered in a separate video please go and watch that video it is a comprehensive uh, coverage of what is a latch up and one uh, thing that can trigger a latch up is because of this uh, some uh, supply bounce or a ground bounce so how do i uh, reduce uh, ground bounce so one best uh, the problem is created because of the um, inductance parasitic inductance which is there between the say all the source and the, this ground and the final ground so this is like my bond pad and this is my pin okay so in between the parasitic inductance so this inductance I can reduce by putting instead of putting one bond wire I'll put multiple bond wires so if I put multiple bond wires, the effective inductance will reduce. So that's how I can reduce ground bounds. And I can ensure that big currents won't flow uh, in this inductance. Sudden transitions won't happen. That I cannot uh, prevent. But so the current spikes that will flow through this or single uh, bond wire that we have to reduce in order to reduce ground bounds. Thanks for watching the video. Please hit the like button. Once you like the video and please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you.